I don't think we've had much impact. Uh, uh, I think uh, my wife uh, has says it best. Uh, she sa she's always said that we existed because of our times, not in spite of them. <coughs> uh, uh, there was a certain amount, a great deal, amount of reading readiness for the general of the general public, uh, and of the healthcare professions. Uh, we're, we're all aware that uh, uh, the time had come to uh, make human sexual functioning a uh, a legitimate source of. Uh, a legitimate research area. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I think the embarrassing thing is that we've spent some 20 plus years now and, and uh, have been so poorly productive that uh, in this particular area we really don't know what we don't know about the subject of sexual functioning, which is entirely different from most other natural functions of the human body. We not that we know all the answers to them, but at least we know where we're weak. In this uh, particular area, we're so. Uh, unknowledgeable that we don't literally don't know what we don't know about the subject. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Johnson, are you conducting new research? Not really new, but uh, we're uh, we're uh, uh, finishing up a. <coughs> Our homosexual work, uh, we've been at it now since 1964. We have a rule at the foundation that we don't publish until we've been at a program for 10 years, or a minimum. So I guess we're getting around to the time we're going to have to turn loose a lot of this material. Uh, we certainly are tremendously interested in uh, 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 some of the special senses, the effect of uh, olfaction, for instance, uh, that is a sense of smell on sexual uh, responsivity. Uh, these are the things that are new and haven't been published yet. Could you tell us some of the <coughs> results of your homosexual research? Well, we can't really uh, turn it loose to the general public until we turn it loose to the professional public first. Uh, suffice it to say that uh, uh, some of it's uh, interesting. We understand that you limit your speaking engagement uh, to three colleges a year, and you speak mostly to the profession, the medical profession. This is true. We, uh, uh, My wife and I <coughs> try to... Uh, appear at a major university in a moderate sized university such as Ball State and then a small college. Uh, we do uh, one in the Midwest, one on the East Coast and one on the Far Coast uh, uh, each year. The rest of the time the presentations are fundamentally to, uh, to uh, uh, the healthcare professions. Do you think there is enough sex education in the medical profession? Well, as of this particular academic year, 75, 76, there are 112 medical schools in these 50 states, and there's still six uh, medical schools that do not allow the subject of human sexual function to, to be presented formally to uh, medical students. So we still have a ways to go. The very first course ever taught in American medicine to uh, medical students, and as a matter of fact, as far as we know, the first course ever taught anywhere in the world to medical students was only taught in the 60, 61 academic year, just 15, 16 years ago. So uh, uh, the curricula of most of the schools have changed in, in uh, a decade and a half. What impact do you feel that your research and your clinic has had on uh, solving some of the sexual problems in the country? Do you see any new trends as far as human sexuality? Uh, to me, the only thing that we see is an increasing degree of comfort with the subject. Uh, even some members of my generation are becoming comfortable with the subject. <laughs> What Most of us are going to have to die off, you understand, but <laughs> some of us are. What is the main reason? Dissemination of information, uh, confronting myth, misconception, even facing a few taboos. Uh, I don't suggest that we've got it made. I just suggest you're asking me a, a trend, and in, my impression is that this is the first trend where it's developing a sense of comfort for the subject. My generation really won't do it, of course. But uh, certainly uh, your generation will, and is. As far as sexual education in the schools, <coughs> talking about elementary schools, do you foresee any new uh, development in that area? I, I, I really can't answer that question. Uh, I've never understood why there was a great argument about sex education anyway, as to where it should be or what it should be. There inevitably is going to be, there always is going to be sex education in four different areas. First and foremost in the home, which is where a good part of it belongs second in the schools, and third in the uh, religious orientation, whatever that might be, and obviously above all else, from one's peers. Uh, the sex education home is, to my mind, is that the home has the great advantage in attitudinal material. 
If parents are comfortable with the subject, they project this. If they're not comfortable, they project this. The, 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 the feeling that I haven't educated, I've been very careful not to mention the subject to my children, and therefore I'm entitled to a, 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 a rose in my crown, always bothers me terribly because that such people forget that they're educating the, the young people in the wrong way. Uh, one's parents' attitudes are, are the first thing that uh, children absorb. And one can educate negatively as well as positively in the home. One does one or the other. So then would you say the dissemination of a, uh, information about sexuality is making the, the topic of sex more accept acceptable in the home? It's got a long way to go before I can say that, Chad. Uh, it's like anything else, you know. Uh, <clears throat> The one thing that is making the difference, obviously, is the tremendous burgeoning of the public media. Uh, for, I'll give you an example. We owe an undying debt of gratitude to the press of this country, I think more than any other two people I know. Uh, the UPI, the AP, the two major papers in St. Louis knew what we were doing by 1958, and all agreed that they would not publish or mention the work until we, until we gave them permission. And about every three, four months, the AP would call, are you ready? Or the UPI would say, don't forget us, or something like that. But never pushed us. And it wasn't until 1965 that, they, that, that uh, public notice was given of this. Uh, we would have been destroyed had there been premature publication before we had a chance to accomplish significant uh, res uh, research uh, productivity. Uh, and if you stop and think about it, that was a protection of, of six or seven years, seven or eight years when uh, the powers that be knew what was going on, not, not the details, but knew that there was a program. Uh, so we, uh, we are in tremendously in debt and will always be in debt to the press of this country. Your wife, sir, is she all right? Well, she has a tendonitis. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, talked at MIT on Monday night and, and uh, she just developed tremendous pains in her, in, in her one leg and the leg began to swell. I thought she had uh, thrombophobitis. But uh, it got her back to St. Louis, but she, it just uh, inflamed tendons in the leg, and, and uh, she just couldn't stand. <laughs> it's just that simple. She had to get off the leg, and that's the reason she isn't with us. I, I'm most disappointed, but that's it. I'm glad I didn't get it. Television critics often lump sex and violence together. Do you object to that? Sure. <laughs> of course I do. I object to violence, whether it's with sex or without it. Uh, ours is a violent society, unfortunately, but it doesn't mean to say that one can't object. I don't, I don't accept. I acknowledge. Uh, for some strange reason, we've reached the stage where, obviously, sex sells and violence sells, and you combine the two and you make a lot of money. And that, after all, ours is a culture of the, of, of, of the greenback, more than any other country I've ever encountered. Uh, culture, rather, not country. Society. Would you comment on uh, pornography? Uh, do you agree with the theory that overexposure lessens the interest of people in pornography? I think to a degree it does, but I have one great, you know, the, the Scandinavian countries uh, <clears throat> have always had uh, free and open house in terms of available pornography, and for a while their own uh, 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 society was interested in it. But for the last few years, the only thing that's, that have kept uh, the Danish and the Swedish uh, Pornographic uh, uh, stores and business have been the American tourist. Uh, times are changing, though. Lord knows our own store, pornography sides are wide open. I have one great concern about pornography that I don't think is mentioned enough. Uh, my great objection to pornography is that it inevitably demeans, degrades the human female. Uh, and I'm unalterably opposed to it on that ground alone. Dr. Masters, what are, what are your views on the stringent sex laws in states and uh, their change, the evolution? Well, most of the laws that were started, uh, that, that have been in, 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 uh, that are on the books, are in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, most other codes are revised. Our criminal codes are revised every oh, 15, 20 years. Uh, Illinois was the very first to revise its code of sex laws. You know, in '61, I think it was. And what they did was, uh, they, they, when they re redid their their uh, uh, their code, they just left sex laws out. Now I'm not talking about such things as physical uh, abuse, but.
But for instance, homosexuality is not against the law in the state of Illinois. Uh, fornication is not against the law in the state of Illinois. Most of the laws that have been passed are, are still in the books. They, they, aren't, uh, they aren't employed or they aren't impressed on people, but they are a threat. Uh, injustices occasionally occur. Uh, of course, it isn't a political thing to do to abrogate sex laws, but one can leave them out of the new codes. And one has to be very careful what one says in an election year, but uh, obviously motherhood and apple pie are back in season until November. And uh, until that's over, uh, uh, we aren't going to have anything other than ab abhorrence of anything that has that doesn't pull votes. What do you think of the revelation of the uh, sexual activities of public figures, such as former presidents and so forth? Uh, 